speaker is uh, Christoph Andreas Sternes from Torino, who is going to talk about uh, short baseline oscillation anomalies and reactor experiments. Please. Yes, um, you can see my slides, right? Okay, thanks. Yes. Um, yeah, so we will change topic a bit and we will talk now about uh, neutrino oscillations. So uh, neutrinos are produced in charged current interactions um, as flavor, st flavor eigenstates. And these flavor eigenstates can be written as coherent superpositions of the mass eigenstates weighted um, with the entries of the neutrino mixing matrix here. So the time evolution of these, uh, of these mass states is given by this equation here, which is simply obtained by solving the free Schrodinger equa equation for these states. So you see that um, if you plug this into this, that after some time t, the neutrino, which had initially a certain composition, will have a different composition. So this means that once the neutrino arrives at the detector, there is a non-zero probability to find the initial new alpha in a different flavor state, new beta. So this is then the, the oscillation amplitude here from which we can directly obtain the neutrino oscillation probability by taking the absolute value squared of that, point, of that quantity here. So you, uh, you see that we have um, the, the oscillation probability to go from new alpha to new beta. If, if alpha and beta are the same, we talk about um, survival or disappearance probabilities. And if alpha and beta, beta are differ different, we talk about appearance probabilities. So these uh, neutrino oscillations, and in particular disappearance has been observed in uh, many experiments over the last 20 or 25 years or so. So first here we have um, the, um, the flux measured from neutrinos coming from the sun, which depending on the energy range can be between 60 and 30% of the flux expected without oscillations. In this figure here, we see basically the same thing for atmospheric neutrinos. So here in the figure, we have downgoing neutrinos. So these are neutrinos which are created right above us on the right side and neutrinos which come through the earth. So they are upgoing, they are created in the atmosphere on the other side and on the earth um, here. And you see that without oscillations, we expect the blue curve and with oscillations, we have the green curve, which, um, which coincides very well with the observation. So um, these, two, um, these two phenomena initially could have been explained by, by different, uh, by different uh, physics scenarios. But then came the measurement by Kamland, the first reactor experiment, which could directly observe the neutrino oscillation and basically rule out all of the other explanations for, for these two here. And then finally, there was also the first observation of uh, neutrino oscillations in accelerator created neutrinos uh, by the K, uh, K2K collaboration in Japan. So you see, we have observed neutrino oscillations coming uh, in neutrinos coming from the sun, the atmosphere, nuclear reactors, and also accelerators. In the standard case, um, the neutrino mixing is given by, uh, by this, mix, by this mix, mi mixing matrix here, which depends on three mixing angles. So these are the theta 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3, and on three CP phases. So we have one CP phase here, which is the Dirac CP phase, and there are two Majorana phases, which would appear in a fourth matrix here on the right side, which I have not written down because oscillation experiments cannot measure um, the Majorana phases. We have three masses, M1, 2, and 3, which can be arranged in, in two orderings. So either new one, which is the neutrino with the largest electron neutrino content, is the lightest neutrino, or new three, the one with the smallest electron neutrino content is the lightest neutrino. So in the first case, we talk about normal neutrino mass ordering. In the second case, about inverted neutrino mass ordering. But in any case, neutrino oscillation experiments cannot measure directly the masses, but only the mass squared differences, which are the delta m squares here. So you cannot use neutrino oscillation experiments to test the, um, the overall mass scale of neutrinos. Okay, so the oscillation probability is then uh, basically defined by six quantities, uh, these ones here. So we have the four quantities which uh, define the mixing matrix and two independent mass splittings. 
And so, yeah, since since uh, the 90s, um, all of these quantities have been uh, more or less well me uh, measured by several experiments. So you see here that there have been measurements from uh, reactor neutrinos, neutrino experiments such as Kamland or other experiments which measure the neutrino oscillations at shorter baselines, long baseline accelerators, atmospheric neutrinos, and solar neutrinos. And you see that all of these parameters have been uh, uh, measured by now. So here you see um, the, the allowed regions and parameter space for neutrino oscillations as given by uh, accelerators, uh, reactors, atmospheric neutrinos, and solar neutrinos. Now, if we combine the data from all of these experiments here, we will eventually arrive at, uh, at these profiles um, here. So you see the blue one is for normal ordering, the magenta one is for inverted ordering. So there is an overall small preference for normal ordering in uh, currently in the analysis of neutrino oscillation data. So I, ha I have taken these figures here from the Valencia global fit. Um, there are other two global fits, the Bari fit and the new fit fit, um, which give um, results which are in good agreement with the one from, uh, from the Valencia group here. So here you see the, the, these profiles translated into numbers, and we see that we have one mass splitting, which is at the order of 10 to the minus 5 electron volt squared. And we have two. Uh, we have the second mass splitting, which is at the order of ten to the minus three um, electron volt squared. So basically, with uh, with these numbers, you can describe um, most of the oscillation data uh, very well. However, there have been a few anomalies. Um, some of them are already very old, like the LSND excess here. So LSND was looking for the appearance of electron neutrinos from an initial muon neutrino beam. So they had uh, they was, were operating on a very short baseline. So they were expecting um, the green curve here, and they measured the points. So you see there is a clear excess of events. It is actually at uh, at the four sigma level. And there were also two more uh, classes of experiments which measured not excesses but uh, deficits of events. So first there was uh, there were the gallium experiments, um, which were actually used to measure neutrinos from the sun. But in the calibration process, they were exposed to strong sources of electron neutrinos. And in this calibration process, um, they detected much uh, much less of the neutrinos that have been expected from the source. So you see, this is like um, at the three sigma level. And finally, there was uh, the reactor antineutrino anomaly. So, so something similar as for the gallium experiments happened in, uh, in the reactor experiments. So you see that um, if you compare the experimental or the measured number with the theoretical or calculated, um, in, uh, and take the average over all ex of all of the reactor experiments that there are, we again had uh, like a three sigma deficit of um, of events. Now the thing is uh, that these um, that these phenomena happened at short baselines, so they cannot be explained uh, with the mass splittings that we had before. So there we have this quantity here, which is called the oscillation length. Um, which we can calculate using the mass splittings from our global fit. So the, the one which was at the order of 10 to the minus 5 electron volt, and the one that wa uh, was at the order of 10 to the minus 3 electron volt squared. And then you see that the oscillations actually happen uh, above 50 kilometers of baseline or above 1 kilometer of baseline. However, to explain these anomalies here with neutrino oscillations, um, we need mass splittings at the order um, of larger than about 0 0.1 electron volt squared. Okay, so in, um, in order to accommodate that in a neutrino oscillation scheme, we need to um, we need to extend our three by three matrix into a four by four matrix, where these um, these new entries here entries here are sub supposed to be perturbations to the to the three by three case. So they are supposed to be small. Okay, so this gives us uh, new effective appearance probabilities 
and uh, new effective disappearance probabilities. So the appearance probability will be important for LSND and also later experiments such as, such as Carmen, Minibone, and Opera, while the disappearance will explain the reactor antineutrino anomaly, the Gallium anomaly, and will also affect uh, oscillations from atmospheric neutrinos and accelerators. And indeed, if we perform the, the analysis of neutrino oscillation data, we find that these experiments prefer mass splittings um, larger than about uh, 0.1 electron volt squared. So this was the situation uh, back then. We have performed now an updated analysis of the reactor antineutrino anomaly, and I will talk about this in the next um, three or four slides. So first, um, First, we have to we have to uh, think that the reactor antineutrino anomaly is obtained by uh, calculating uh, the number of events over the full energy range. So it it is uh, largely model dependent because um, the the flux coming from the nuclear reactor is um, so this is a, a difficult calculation and and as I will show you in the next slide, different flux models uh, give uh, very different results. So basically using uh, the, the flux calculations that have been used until very recently, um, which are called the Huber-Müller fluxes, um, we obtain this, um, this um, uh, confidence regions here for the, for the combined analysis of the latest data of all reactor experiments. So you see that there, is, uh, that there are closed contours at two sigma confidence levels. So we have uh, a preference for sterile oscillations at more than two, some, somewhere between two and three, closer to three actually sigma confidence level. However, uh, recently, in, so in March, this calculation here has been performed um, from the, by people from the Kurchatov Institute, um, where the, where, um, where they predict at a slightly smaller amount um, of, uh, of antineutrino events. So you see that in this case, we have not even at one sigma closed regions. So this means that, that there is no preference at all for sterile neutrino oscillations. And this happens because the, the prediction for the, for the inverse beta decay uh, yield in the case of this um, Kurchatov Institute model is in much better agreement uh, with the measure to yield, for example, here illustrated for Diabe and Reno. So the, the, here in this figure, in comparison to the last one, we have the Huber-Müller prediction, which is the white, uh, the, the CN line here, and the Kurchatov Institute prediction here. So you see that using these uh, newest data, there is actually no reactor antineutrino anomaly anymore. So we have, a, we have a central value of 0 0.985, but the value of one is within one sigma of our calculation. So the, the whole takeaway message here is that using the newest flux calculations, the reactor antineutrino anomaly is going away. Now, there's a different type of experiment which does not depend on the flux predictions, which are the, the ratio experiments. So instead of uh, measuring the flux at one position, uh, the detectors here can be, uh, can be put in different position, and then one can compare the, the spectrum, which is measured in position, uh, for example, A, with the spectrum, which is measured in, uh, in position B, and then the flux dependence is, um, is eliminated from the analysis. So these are uh, current experiments which perform um, these technique to search for sterile neutrino oscillations. And um, at the beginning of 2018, there was actually a preference for sterile neutrinos coming from a combined analysis of DANS and NEOS, which are uh, Russian and uh, Korean experiments. So you see both of them had um, an indef independent uh, preference at over two sigma confidence level, but in the combination, they preferred this island here at more than three sigma. And this was also more in more or less agreement with the reactor and gallium anomalies. So this was the situation in 2018. And by the end of 2019, actually the preference from NEOS and DANS was going away. So you see here we had um, no, closed, uh, no closed regions anymore at, two sig at uh, three sigma, but still at two sigma. 
And now, if we take the latest data from uh, all of the experiments, um, there are not even uh, closed uh, contours anymore at two sigma. So you see that from the combination of this data, there is also no preference for sterile neutrinos from the ratio experiments. And this was okay until um, about two years ago when the neutrino four collaboration claimed uh, more than three sigma observation of sterile neutrinos on their own. Um, the problem Five here. Minutes. Okay, the problem here was that they were actually obtaining a very large mixing angle, which was. Um, which is uh, in disagreement with what I, what I said before that these oscillations should be um, should be on, only small, so they should be only perturbations to the standard scenario. So we have tried to reproduce the data from uh, um, from uh, so to, to reproduce the results from neutrino four, and if you do so, um, you calculate basically the number of events in this way. And the important thing on, on this uh, horrible slide is that there is something um, entering the calculation, which is the resolution function, which basically maps the true prompt energy into the reconstructed prompt energy that is visible in the detector. Um, from the information which is given by neutrino 4, we can basically model this, um, this uh, energy resolution uh, by this Gaussian here. So if we then use the neutrino 4 data, we obtain the blue magenta and red lines here. So this is in disagreement with what, what was observed in, in neutrino 4. First, we have even a larger best fit value than they do, but our, um, our contours are not closed. So our preference for sterile neutrinos using the same data is smaller than uh, uh, the one obtained officially from the collaboration. Now, the problem is that we were able to reproduce the official mm -hmm. results only when neglecting um, the energy resolution. So basically when assuming that this here is a delta function, which is of course not correct. So this raises the question if this neutrino four analysis does not have any flaws in it. So this means that the results that they obtained is uh, doubtful. So for, there was also search for sterile neutrinos in different types of experiments, for example, in accelerators and um, and in uh, and in atmospheric searches and there has been no evidence so far so this means that we can only put upper bounds on the u mu 4 and u tau 4 uh, entries of the of the uh, of the 4 by 4 mixing matrix there has been recently uh, um, a new result from the ice cube collaboration where they obtain closed contours at 90 percent confidence level but they are statistically not very strong because at 95 or 99 it is uh, already uh, already an open uh, open region, so it does not close anymore. For regarding the appearance uh, searches, there was LSND, and there were other experiments such as Mini Boon, which confirmed um, the excess, whilst others like Carmen Nomad and the other ones here in this list did not confirm this. However, from a combined analysis of all appearance data. Um, you see that there is a strong preference for sterile neutrino oscillations. So this brings me to the last point, which is the uh, so-called appearance-disappearance tension. So you see that the, that the appearance experiments measure directly this quantity here. The, the disappearance experiments measure the uh, electron one, so the, the allium and, um, and the reactor experiments on their own, the UE4, while the atmospheric and muon experiments measure the U mu4. So this means if, we, if you combine the measurements from reactors and accelerators, you can also bound this quantity here, which is measured uh, directly by appearance searches. And in this, in this uh, global fit here from 2017, you see that from the combination of all appearance data, you get the blue region. And from the combination of all disappearance data, you get the red region. So you see that there was nice overlap in this region here around uh, 1.3 or 1.4 electron volt squared. So this was giving uh, um, a good fit, a good global fit to, to sterile neutrino oscillations. If we use the current data or, or the nearly all of the current data, the picture looks like this. So you see that there is no overlap anymore between the disappearance and appearance regions, uh, which makes this global, this global three plus one fit statistically not acceptable. 
So this brings me to, to the conclusions. Um, we have seen that short based anomalies cannot be explained with standard neutrino oscillations. But um, the reactor antineutrino anomaly um, is going away with the newest flux calculations. And um, also are the hints uh, for sterile neutrinos from the ratio experiments. The only one that remains is neutrino four, um, but whose result is uh, rather doubtful. And uh, basically from the combination of all of the disappearance and appearance data, we see that the global three plus one fit is statistically unacceptable. Now, the only thing um, which is then remaining is that we still do not know what has been observed in LSND and mini one. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your talk. And are there questions or comment to Christoph? Can I have a question? This is Sergei Petkov. Hello. Hello. Uh, now, uh, given this uh, negative final result, which experiments, uh, which data you could, I mean, if you ignore which data you could get some kind of a reasonable positive uh, indication? Yes, so, so this was possible until some time ago. So there, there were these studies when you, for example, remove one of LSND or mini boon, and then you get a reasonable fit. So this is not possible anymore. You would need to remove one whole class of experiments. So if you if you remove the LSND and mini boon, you will of course have a reasonable fit because if you remove LSND and mini boon, uh, this will not will not not have an upper limit. So this region will extend to zero. So basically, you, you cannot make it fit. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.